Hiya, my name's David. I'm the Wandering Ponderer. Welcome to another video. Today I'm in the Brian Tabbit Memorial Garden because I want to take up from where where I started in the last video, really. Just to give you a little bit more history on this corner of Coggeshall Town Centre so that you understand how things became the way they are now. For example, we have all these the new builds here and that building was built in 1902 E.W. King used to have a, a, a warehouse here and on one of the maps, uh, the map that the museum have in their possession, it shows buildings on this site here and one of them is listed as coal, uh, the gravel mill not Colbert Mill, Gravel Mill. But in, in this whole area, there used to be a, a whole row of buildings all down here. If you look on the old maps, all along here. All along here. And There were stables, there were, there was a big brick house, which is the story that I want to tell you now. I'll show you. A lot of noise going on in the background because they're clearing some scaffolding. It's a new house there, this house, this whole site here. And all along here, was burnt to the ground. Comparing the current map that they have in the museum, the 1875 map, I do believe. Right, comparing the maps, the 1875 museum map, and the Nas National Libraries of Scotland map, which is an ordnance survey map of this area, which is a revision of the 1896 map that was revised in and published in 1898. You can tell by comparing those maps the damage that was left over because the buildings that were left, and this is before this building that's right in front of me was, was built. Go on, you can come by. It's all right. 1902, so they didn't, they didn't uh, spend too long after a building had been burnt to the ground on this site to actually replace it. 1902. Now the story that I want to just to cover today is about a great fire in 1897. It's called the Great Fire of 1897, which was the Gravel House Fire, and it started in a stable. According to Trevor Disley's book, Fires, Firemen and Other Mishaps, about a quarter to nine in the evening of the 26th of October 1897, Mr. Lawrence put his pony in the stable on the gravel and left for home. His lad Percival followed ten minutes later, after putting out the light in the lantern. 
An hour later, two friends, Walter Brown and James Melville, were walking along the gravel and saw that the stable was on fire and raised the alarm. Hearing a horse inside, they found a crowbar, broke open the door and saw that the pony had fallen to the ground. They tried to get in but were forced back by the heat. Mr E. W. King arrived and with some difficulty managed to get his pony out of an adjoining stable and once free it galloped away up the street. The fire engine was sent for and arrived either shortly afterwards or almost an hour later. The accounts vary. Superintended by William Tansley but it, it is not clear if he had any men with him. The engine was first taken to the nearest water at Robinsbrook in Hare Bridge on West Street where the water proved too shallow for the engine to work properly but in the attempt stones and rubbish were drawn in which partially blocked the hard suction hose. The engine was then moved past the fire to the back ditch at the short bridge but the hose was still attached and was damaged as it was dragged along the ground. There were just too many excited people anxious to assist. Very little water had got to the burning buildings when the hose burst. Meanwhile, Messrs E. W. King and Co. removed their car and a quantity of oats from their storehouse, which adjoined Mr. Lawrence's stable, and the flames leapt up from there to the house belonging to Captain Townsend, occupied by Miss Popham, timber lace manufacturer. Upwards of 1,000 people had by this time arrived upon the scene of the conflagration, but hardly a person among them thought for a moment that the fine three-storied house adjoining which had been substantially built with bur would be burned to the ground. But if you look at the maps that I've put up, you'll see the differences between the two maps. And this story tells how this whole section of the road here changed because of a fire. Well, that's it from me. As always, I'll put it down here. And uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video which I hope will be next week. Stay safe.